Hello, my name is Mike Avery from Cadence Design Systems. The question asked by the video is what is the difference between a concurrent SVA property and procedural code and an immediate assertion? Now there's several predicates required there in order to understand that question. First is what is an immediate assertion and the second is what a concurrent assertion. If in an always block in some module we have one of these statements then this is defined as being a immediate assertion. So there are various forms of the syntax, this is just one form. There is this part here, an optional label, that's a unique identifier for that particular assert. Next comes the keyword assert, then some condition which we are asserting, i.e. telling the tool it must check is always true. And here we have some message to be displayed in the event of that expression we've said here not being true. This else could be any statement, in this case we're using the dollar error mechanism to report that message. Many of you may have used concurrent assertions before and you'll know that the syntax looks like this. Now the code as you see it here would compile and that may surprise many people for different reasons. Firstly that the concurrent assertion I've just pasted in there is legal syntax so it doesn't matter if I had said neg edge clock there that would still be legal syntax and would compile. So many people think that a concurrent assertion is one outside of an always block. That is not true. As we've just seen, you can paste a concurrent assertion into procedural code and it still remains a concurrent assertion. And we'll talk about its behavior later on. So what this also alerts people to is they may be wondering for years, why do I always need this word property here? when I define a concurrent assertion. The reason is because if you didn't, the tool might think if it was in procedural code that this was in fact an immediate assertion. So for example, this on the line above, this assertion we've said is an immediate assertion, it has some defined behavior. And if I do this, I've now made that a concurrent assertion and it would still work in exactly the same way. And let me repeat that exactly the same way as it did before. To allow us to analyze this further, let's add in a few more concurrent assertions. So I've added this one here, this one, and this is exactly the same as the property on the line above, other than it's using neg edge clock instead of pos edge clock. So that's the only difference between these two properties here. Very similar names, their names tell you which edge of the clock they're using. And we've also got a property which is exactly the same, other than it has no clock at all defined for it. So notice in this file, there is no definition of a default clock. In SVA, every assertion has to have a clock from somewhere. That somewhere can either be explicitly defined in the property definition, as in these two properties just here, or it can be from a default clock. That is a syntax error otherwise, so where does this get its clock from? The most obvious kind of choice, and the correct answer is the clock of the always block. So it's as if I had typed at pos edge clock in there, if I put this in a always block with an event control at pos edge clock. So what we'll also do while we're at it is we'll bring in some more properties here which are outside of the always block so there's no confusion about whether they're immediate or whether they're concurrent assertions. These are outside of an always block therefore they are concurrent. So we've defined one property which has exactly the same behavior as these other concurrent properties we've pasted into that always block up there. In this case they're explicitly stating pos edge clock and neg edge clock. And let's just delete those to uh, those are just where I copied the ones I put in the always block. So we've got definition of this property and we're instancing it twice. Once by defining the property as a pos edge, once defining the property as neg edge. So notice this original property definition has no explicit clock defined and I've already said there's no default clock therefore if I'd have just asserted a property without this clock here that will be a syntax error. I provided the clock when I instanced that property. That's the name of the property I instanced which is the same as the name as from this property definition. And for this one, I decided to use the neg edge clock. So the question I'm going to answer now by doing a simulation is which one of these behave the same and which don't, but it might be fun to guess up front. We're in an always block here with pos edge clock. So you might think, well, it's reasonable to expect that all the concurrent assertions I put in here are using the pos edge clock. However, you know, what happens to this one? Maybe it would be a reasonable conclusion to say, well, it can't possibly ever be activated. It never gets evaluated because it's clock expression is different from the always block. The one with no clock it might be reasonable to expect that the pos edge clock here is the clock that gets used but we don't know for sure until we simulate. For these ones here there's no ambiguity at all you know we know that this property will use the pos edge clock this will use the neg edge clock. No ambiguity on that at all. For the immediate assertion there's also no ambiguity because I could not take this if I just remove this um, property I added here. I cannot take that statement outside of an always block and have it compile. It's illegal syntax. So if I do that, I'm just going to save that file. The first one I need to do is copy this immediate assertion and paste it in an area outside of an always block. And I need to change this instance label, of course. So I'm expecting now to see a line 91 is the line of code. I'm expecting to see an error on that line because that does not have the word property there. So let's try this. Error line 91, reserve word property missing after assert. 
Okay, so simple immediate assertions are illegal outside the procedural code. Okay, so this hash zero here, this is what's called a deferred immediate assertion. Um, so we'll talk about those in another video. The title of the video is deferred immediate assertions, <laughs> funnily enough. So that doesn't work. And just to show you, if I'd have put the word property there, and if I had listened to my editor and just chose that one and done the same thing, it's now telling me there's a no clock there. Okay, I would have had to put this expression in brackets and define a clock for example like this and now it starts compiling let's look at the results so if we go to this windows menu here new assertion browser this lists all assertions in my design i need to push in this all button to see them all notice here in that table i've got my two immediate assertions as well so from this table i can't really discern the difference between an immediate assertion and a concurrent one so let's say I'm going to select to send these to the waveform viewer. What we can also do is open the source browser in the tool. So I click right on any property, send to the source browser to see this code down here. So here's my assertions, I can see. So bear in mind all these assertions, these immediate assertions, where I've just said A equals B. So the one that is outside of procedural code, i.e. is a concurrent assertion, having added the word property here and a clock. That is the same as the one inside of the always block. All the properties are the same. This is their definition. A followed by B followed by C implies next cycle J followed by K. The only thing different about them is whether they're in procedural code or not and which edge of the clock they're using. So if we were to plot the results here, what we can see, if I uh, make this maximum size, is the properties like the concurrent assertion, this one here, and the procedural one, they're identical. The only thing different about them is their instance name. They behave exactly the same over all those cycles. So their behavior is exactly the same. All the ones which are used in the pos edge, so that's the concurrent assertion, the one that I pasted inside a procedural code, and the one I defined in procedural code but with no clock, i.e. it's using the always blocks clock, they all behave exactly the same. These two assertions, which were just checking a boolean in procedural code, as an immediate assertion or outside of procedural code I had to change that to a concurrent assertion they behave exactly the same so in that the only thing that would be a surprise to me I would guess is that if you look at this procedural assertion which is the neg edge look at the source code back a minute the two in question here are the ones whose name ends in neg edge here they're behaving exactly the same and if I was to look at the source code that might be a surprise to me so this is the only feature of this behavior that, which I think would surprise anyone so we're talking about this property here the one sampling at neg edge clock behaves the same as this property up here, which is also sampling at a neg edge clock, but it's in an always block with an at pos edge clock. And the reason for that is because that's how the language reference manual defines it. Inside of an always block, if pos edge clock isn't the evaluation clock for a property, it just waits until it occurs. Okay. So none of these concurrent assertions here, the ones that are defined as being sequences, they do not block execution of that always block. Okay, so that they are sampled at every pos edge clock and remember their state from the last time it was evaluated, i.e. the last pos edge clock. Which means that this dollar display here saying the line past assertion and so on in the text message will occur at every pos edge clock. Now the question becomes what happens to this concurrent assertion if I place some other procedural code in here? If I were to say for example if put some boolean expression for example or under s that forms the if block there this procedural concurrent assertion using the pos edge of that clock is only evaluated if r and s are true so if i enter this always block out the pos edge clock and r and s are not true i do not continue evaluation of this property from where i was the last time and therefore i wait until the next pos edge clock and again check if r and s are true before i evaluate that again so having made that change let's re-invoke the simulator and when we look at the waveform plot now notice I've got this signals R and S down here so during this region here that expression in my if statement if R and S are true clearly isn't so we can also see that if we look at these two results of the assertion now one which is inside the if block and one which is a concurrent assertion so we can see their results are the same until this if expression is no longer true and thereafter once we get to this stage here where the property states become the same again their behavior is identical so I've now modified the behavior of that assertion by only evaluating it when it's inside of the branch of code which gets executed in procedural code at any given pos edge clock. So let's summarize on what we've learned. Immediate assertions say assert and not assert property and they're only valid in procedural code if they're simple immediate assertions. If you accidentally paste a usable 
and working concurrent assertion inside procedural code, the chances are it behaves the same unless you go and paste it in some branch of code which is only executed conditionally, as in an if statement like so. So the question might be, uh, when would I choose to use these? Would I ever do these in real life? So again, I'm giving you now my personal opinion, which you may find other different opinions from this, but I've never found a pragmatic situation where it made sense to go and put a concurrent assertion in procedural code. So you can get different behavior, yes, but my question would be, why would I go to all that time, trouble and complication if I'm trying to verify something in the shortest time possible? I've never encountered a situation where I needed to use a concurrent assertion in procedural code because that seemed like the most sensible way of doing things. So thank you for watching this video and you may also care to watch the other video I mentioned which is called deferred immediate assertions in order to see how they work because they can be useful at times inside of simulation, not necessarily formal in simulation. So thanks for the time listening to this and goodbye.